No, no I mean, first of all, the energy crisis is a big burden on many people, and uh, and the reasons for that is even if is even more sad. Uh, just for us as a company, it accelerates our efforts to uh, to save energy to go for renewables. We have, for example, last year because we, we needed to, we increased our percentage of alternative fuels by more than 10 percent in Europe alone, and that was helped by this uh, hike in energy prices, the availability of energy. So, uh, so for us. Uh, the race has accelerated. That's not, that's not something you're not backwards back. again once the hydrocarbon prices have come off. I think we've got 18 month lows on natural gas price in Europe. It's not something you're going to go backwards on as well, is it? No, we have, we have our strategy to decarbonize wholesale to go to net zero, and that includes to go for renewables in all our plants. So, so we have, and now I think it will be and probably. Just remind our viewers when you're going to get there. Oh, we're going to get for renewables. We have a 2030. I want to see most of our sites go 100% renewables wow. on energy. That's pretty fast. And, and we're going to get there. there. And the energy crisis, in a strange way, helps to accelerate because. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of, as again, I hate to use the WEF word in every interview, but poly crises as well. Uh, and one of the crises we've seen is unbelievable supply chain disruption, whether it comes from China, whether it comes from the broader COVID, whatever it may well be as well. And it's something that's affected your industry and every industry as well. Some businessmen and women I'm speaking to now are saying, actually, those cost pressures, so the, the supply chain issues as well are abating somewhat. What, what are you seeing? Well, I mean, we have unprecedented volatile times. I mean, remember, we went into this first global pandemic of of today's world, and then with the disruption first, volume disruption, supply disruption, then actually we had a deflation in the first part of the pandemic. Then we, we go into this hyperinflation, we go into the war of the Ukraine, so we have all the geopolitical tensions. So I think in my corporate life, this has been probably the most volatile environment and requires a very agile management for the company. So mm -hmm. first phase of the pandemic, we have to fight to service our customer, to f fight the disruptions or solve them. And then in the second part of our the pandemic, we have to uh, cope with the hyperinflation. And we did this very well. And now mm -hmm. we, go, we go into 2023. And uh, we think we have set sales very well for energy, for cost, for pricing. But, but this year going to remain agile. Yeah, you're going to remain, but again, just to kind of just hone in on the point, are raw material cost pressures abating a little bit at this stage of the year? I'm, I'm again, we're, yeah. we're all talking about recession as well, potentially, and whether we're going to skirt it or not, or how deep it's going to be. Are those pressures abating? So they have lowered for now. Okay, for but, now. But just be careful, right? We had this uh, unprecedented high inflation last year from energy to raw materials to labor, from availability to pricing. So we, are, we, we had a very busy 2022. So let's not, because we have an easing for two months, let's, maybe that's a trend, but we are prepared to, uh, to have also a, a reverse situation. Depends what's happening in the world. The geopolitical tensions are, are there. So we don't know how it, how this will play out, so we prepare for, for different scenarios. Um, it's interesting you said to me geopolitical tensions rather than recession risk as well. Are you more worried about geopolitical tensions than, than, than broader recession risk, or are they intertwined as one? We go quite strong into this year. We have full order books in North America. We have a bit softening volumes in Europe, but a good situation. So we are not so worried about our orders. And the uh, world needs to, to build a lot. It needs to build better, more sustainable. So we have uh, quite good orders for 2023. So I'm more worried that uh, geopolitically we are not getting back on track.